Welcome to the 27. This is part one of a three-part series designed to be an introduction to the setup tabs for AMS2. We're going to be focusing on each of the tabs specifically and, take, and talking a little bit about what you as a driver might be trying to accomplish with your setup and the adjustments you can make just to do that. Now this can be a very deep subject, so my goal here is to make it as palatable as possible, but we do, we do occasionally need to discuss what this stuff is actually doing and why, and that gets a little bit thick. I think with just this series, you can probably get your car 75% to where it needs to be, which could be just fine for you. The extra 25% is you know, nitpicking and where I live basically using telemetry and fine tooth combs. Um, but I understand that I can't get all the cars you might be playing right now, but I'm going to be doing my best to bridge that gap for you. Let's get some preliminary items out of the way first with regards to setups. Although there are three tabs and you may be looking to adjust one thing, changing that one thing can affect other things. And usually there are several different setups that can affect how a car feels. It's like a, um, it's like a synergistic web. And there's no perfect setup, only the setup that's right for you personally that accomplishes the same goals. The next important note is that you're going to have to tap into the matrix and focus on your ability to learn what the car is telling you as you drive it. It is paramount to approaching setup solutions. If you can start doing this effectively, the setup changes required will come much more naturally. No one gets this right after one lap. It takes a lot of trial and error and testing. I may go through, uh, you know, 10 to 20 three plus lap testing sessions for each car, for each track. Um, you don't necessarily have to do this. Um, you don't have to do this in one sitting, mind you. You can always be tinkering with these things. So let's get into it. Um, we're breaking it down by the tabs. The first tab is tire spill with a Y, brakes, and chassis. Um, we'll get into the suspension and drive uh, drivetrain in future episodes. But we have to start um, focusing in on what we're looking at here and what all of the information, all this means. So starting from the top left, um, you're looking at the, the front left tire here. It tells you the compound, the tire pressure. Underneath that is like a graphic that the game uses to um, show you what the tires are, uh, what the status of the tires are after like a tire warmer blanket. It's not really informative. What's more important is the cold pressure um, and also the, uh, the racing uh, temperatures, which you'll find on the telemetry HUD. You're looking at the brakes over here, the brake pressure, the brake bias, front to rear, um, the front and rear brake ducts. Um, and then you're looking at uh, the downforce, the front and the rear. And then finally, longitudinal and lateral weight bias, which is sort of high level mechanical grip stuff that we're probably not gonna be touching on today. What we are gonna focus in on is setting the proper contact patch for the tire, which is what this screen is primarily about. And um, what I mean by the contact patch is that circular little oval where the rubber meets the road um, and how big or small that is. Um, that's really, really important for temperature, grip, and all of the things that you need um, for driving a race car at its limits. So temperature wise, we're gonna be looking at the telemetry HUD. The telemetry HUD is going to show you the in, middle, out of the tire under racing conditions. Um, then we're going to be looking at the pressure of the tire. Uh, when we go back to the setup screen, the, the pressures are going to be represented uh, in, as the cold pressures in bar or PSI. In order to adjust the cambering of the tires appropriately, you're going to be looking at the IMO and if the in, the inside temperature in C or in you know Fahrenheit has to be hotter than the outside at all times, and this changes from the front to the rear. So for the example, in the front tire, if the the inside temperature is 90 C, you're going to want the outside temperature to be around 83 C. For the rears, if the inside temperature is 90 C, you're going to want the outside temperature to be around 85 to 87 C. Um, you're going to want a flatter rear to provide that uh, drive for a rear wheel drive car. 
after driving at least three laps and you're looking at the telemetry HUD and the inside temperature is is not as hot as the outside, um, that's really bad. What you're going to do is you're going to increase the camber um, for that the, whatever tire that is. So the goal here is to get that inside and outside to be you know seven degrees or five degrees in the rear. Once you're finished with that and you're happy with the results, that's when you start looking at the middle temperature on the telemetry HUD. The middle temperature on the telemetry HUD is going to tell you if your pressure is proper. An interesting thing about AMS2 that's different than a lot of other games right now, this may be fixed in the future, I don't know, but there is no static optimal tire pressure. Like so for example, if you did some research and you saw that uh, GT3s use Pirelli uh, tires and the optimal racing pressure for a Pirelli tire is 8.8, a 1.8 bar. That doesn't work like that in this game. What's more important in this game for the contact patch is the, the con is the contact patch itself. There's no, the, there's no goal to reach with regards to bar or PSI. And the way we reach that goal is to look at the middle temperature. If that middle temperature of each of the tires is right in between the inside and the outside, then your, your pressure is proper. If it's too high comparatively or too low comparatively, that means it's the pressure is too high or too low. It's pretty simple stuff. So using the example from before, if your front tire is 90 on the inside and 83 on the outside, you're going to want the middle temperature to be about, uh, let's say, 86 degrees C. And for the rears, if it's 90 and say 85 on the outside, you're going to want it to be like 87, 88. To get those numbers to be where we want them, we go back to the setup screen and then we took, take a look at the cold pressure of the tires in bar or PSI. You increase it if it's too low and decrease it if it's too high. Pretty simple stuff. Once you get that done and everything's per appropriate, you're good to go. Okay, great. So once you have the pressuring and the cambering done, let's move into the brakes. Now the brakes, this part is where you manage um, the, the load that each of the tires uh, can assume under braking conditions. Now, when you're driving a car for the first time, uh, the first thing uh, someone notices is when they first hit the brakes, what the car does. You know, driving in a straight line and hitting an accelerator is, is, is easy enough. But when you hit those brakes, you don't know what's going to happen. Um, for the most part, when you hit the brakes really hard in a braking zone for the first time and the back end is, is slipping out and, and spinning, that means the back end is locking up before the fronts. You don't want that. That's catastrophic. Um, so here we're going to be adjusting the brake bias. The goal for brake bias adjustment is to make sure that the front tires lock up before the rear tires, if they do at all. Um, if the fronts lock up, the response of the car will be generally under, um, understeer going into the corner, which is not catastrophic. It's detrimental, but not catastrophic. But it'll allow you to feather that brake going into a trail braking scenario or turning into a corner. It gives a player a lot more to work with instead of spinning off the track. Once you have that set, that's when we go into looking at the brake pressure. The brake pressure is how, you know, obviously I think it just speaks for itself. It's how much brake pads are crushing against the brake discs. But um, if you're feeling like the car is locking up too frequently or too much, then you're going to reduce that pressure. And this is going to depend on the track. Some tracks have high speed, you know, straightaways that come to a really sharp hairpin. High, good brake, uh, a good amount of brake pressure is going to be really good for those braking zones. Whereas if you have a lot of like gradual flowing corners where you're constantly like uh, tapping the brakes here and there, you might not need that much brake pressure there. Moving into the ducting, this is actually interesting because it does two things. The first thing the ducting does is manages the temperature of the brake pads. So um, keeping them in the optimal range is one of the things it does. The second thing that does is it actually controls the core temperature of the tire. Now in AMS2, when you're looking at the telemetry HUD and you're hitting a braking zone, take a look at the brake temperatures. If the brakes are turning red, that is a bad thing. You never want the brakes to be red. 
So in, in that, under those circumstances, you're going to either want to reduce the brake pressure or open the ducts a little bit more so that the, the, the brake pads have a chance to cool before you hit, hit that braking zone. Now, after you've done that, you may notice on a specific track that the brake pads will start turning uh, blue. Now, that's not great, but it's not detrimental like it is if they turn red. Blue, you know, the, 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 uh, what I've seen is the speed in which these brake pads heat up and get into the green, which is the optimal um, braking efficiency, it, it's, it's really negligible. But when you hit that red, it's the braking efficiency just is catastrophic. So it's okay to be blue, <laughs> but it's terrible to be red. Now, say you have that set appropriately um, and you're noticing some of your rear tires are getting to like, you know, 100C or 105C. Um, 105C is a grip um, break point for the tires. So you're going to start to lose a lot of grip at that point. So we're going to have to start managing that tire temperature. And one of the ways you can do that with is with the ducting. So if you open the ducts a little bit more, it may bring that temperature down a couple more degrees. Now you'll see that your brake pads are gonna turn blue um, more frequently, but that's fine. Like I said before, it's not detrimental. It's more important to have that grip. Okay, great. The last item that we're gonna talk about here on this tab is the downforce front and rear. Obviously, this is way more important for um, aero type cars, you know, formula cars with front wings and rear wings or LMPs with big splitters and big spoilers and, and but it's important for every car really. The goal here is to find the balance between the front and the rear downforce. Now, how do you find that balance? I would set, suggest taking the car to a track that has like a really long high speed corner. Um, here you're going to evaluate whether or not the car is uh, biting on the front end, loose on the back end. A lot of the times with an aero car, um, this, is an, this is an aero balancing problem. So if the front of the car seems like it's biting on a high speed corner more than the rear is and the rear is coming out, you might want to consider reducing front uh, downforce or increasing rear downforce or both. If on the other hand, when you're at that high speed corner and the car seems to just want to drive straight off the track, um, that's the opposite scenario. You're going to want to increase the front downforce, perhaps decrease the rear downforce. Once that balance is established, you're in a really good place. After that, you can increase and decrease the rear at the same time up and down depending on the nature of the track. So if you need more downforce for uh, say a low speed track, um, Silverstone is an exception. That's one of those tracks where you want a lot of high, you want a lot of downforce, but generally speaking, you get the idea. Um, high speed, you want to have that straight line speed. You want to reduce the downforce, but you want to reduce them both at the same time. Balance is the most important thing here. All right, so that's the first setup tab in AMS2. Tires, spell with a Y, brakes, and chassis. So let's move into a quick recap. What you're doing here first is setting that contact patch by adjusting the cambering and the pressures of the tires. And we do that by monitoring, monitoring the IMO of the tires on the telemetry HUD. If the temperature in the front is generally seven degrees C, um, you're in good shape with the cambering. If it's more than that or less than that, you're going to want to reduce it or increase the cambering. Same goes with the rear, except the, de the temperature difference in C is going to be about three to five degrees. To set the pressure appropriately, we're going to be monitoring that middle temperature on the telemetry HUD. If that number falls directly between the inside and the outside, you're perfect. If it's too high, that means it's too it's overpressured. If it's too low, it's underpressured. The next thing we're doing is we're adjusting the and brakes. We're managing the lockups and which tires lock up before the others and how often they they lock up. And then also managing the temperatures of the brake pads themselves to keep them at maximum efficiency, but also using that to control the core temperature of the tire. And finally, we're managing the downforce of the car using the front splitters, the rear spoilers, the front wing, the rear wing. You're trying to find that balance between the front and the back, and then adjusting the car equally in equal measure up and down depending on the characteristics of that specific track that you're driving. 
So great. We have a lot more stuff to co cover with the suspension and the drivetrain. These are both really interesting tabs, and I think where a lot of the confusion comes in for players, but they are very, very important as well. So we'll get into that next time. Thanks for stopping by. Take care.